Hi, this is Dino, and I want to show you the circuit breaker pattern with Apogee. Uh, we can do that using something called target servers in Apogee. So I've got an example API proxy set up in Apogee in my demo organization to kind of help us through this. This is a pass-through proxy. There is just one proxy endpoint. Uh, it has no policies that run. It routes to um, a target endpoint that I've called target endpoint direct. So none of this should be surprising. There are no policies that execute there either, um, but it does connect to a specific endpoint, a uh, specific HTTPS endpoint. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, if I invoke this uh, directly now uh, from my curl command, it is basically, it's an app engine uh, app. It's a Google app engine app. It's running on the internet and it echoes back what it receives. So when I send it a get, it tells me in JSON, the message, uh, the method that I received is a get, the URL was slash, uh, I can add other URLs, you know, anything I want, it'll tell me, oh, that's what you sent me. So it's basically an echo. Uh, it also echoes um, or plays back the headers that it received. And m many of these headers, you see, I'm not sending them from my curl command, I'm not sending those HTTP headers. But those are being received by the App Engine app just by virtue of the App Engine infrastructure. This is all stuff that's added by the Google Load Balancer uh, in the Google Cloud before the request reaches my App Engine app. Okay, so it's a very simple app. It's a Node.js app. I also have a version of that running locally. So I can start it over here, and you can see I've got a request or a, a echo listening there. And I can now do the same request um, to my local host and 5950 is the port. And you can see uh, I get something similar. But now there are no headers because this uh, locally running echo service is not behind the Google load balancer. So it's not getting all those app engine headers and so on. But you can see it's, it's doing the same thing. It's the same code. Uh, it tells me the URL and the method and whatever headers it received and so on. Okay, so that is my uh, my target service in this proxy. Now, how do I invoke it? Let me turn on tracing. And what we want to do is invoke it here. So go back to my window and I'll invoke it in the same way. And it doesn't matter what I what I put for the URL. Uh, the base path is target server with fallback. And so I'll just put that foo in there. And what we should see is uh, the Apogee proxy is a pass-through to that app engine app that runs the echo thing and then all of this information that we were receiving when we invoked it directly. We're also getting it in, uh, getting it when we invoke it through the Apogee proxy. And you can see right here, this is, this is the endpoint that it's invoking and that's all as desired. Okay, if I run that again, I should get another request. You see another 200 re um, response in the trace and that is all as expected. Now, if I flip over to my Google Cloud Platform console, I can disable that application. What that means is uh, I'm telling Google, don't serve any inbound requests to this uh, application in Google Cloud. So I've just turned it off. And if I go back to uh, my terminal and try to invoke it directly, um, that's the command I used. You're now seeing, I'm not getting a 200, I'm getting a 404. I'm getting a not found response, and it's saying um, you know that that app is no longer listening. So if I invoke it directly, um, I get a 404. And likewise, I should see the same thing when I run it through this pass-through proxy. And indeed, I do. If I hit the pass-through proxy, um, it's um, trying to hit that same endpoint, and it's it's hearing back from Google. Uh, Google Cloud saying, oh, that, that app is no longer running, so you get a 404. All right, so what we want to do is use that to simulate um, the circuit breaker. So how do we do that? Let's stop the trace. We'll go back into the um, API proxy, and I told you that I was using uh, the direct target endpoint. This is the one that uh, just directly uh, connects to the back end. We specify the URL, and that, that's how it works. There is an alternative in Apogee, and that is to specify a, a load balancer with a health monitor. So that's what I've done here. I've specified a load balancer with multiple different servers, uh, and, the, and load will be spread across these servers in a round-robin fashion. 
except for the one that's marked is fallback, which is true, which means it always gets the, um, the request if all the others fail. Now, I only have two servers, so if this one fails, then the fallback server will get all the, um, the requests. All right. Then I've got some other configuration that, that describes, uh, that tells Apogee how to, how to determine whether the server endpoint is healthy or not, and a uh, health monitor and so on. This one I've said, I want to be, uh, I want this to be a TCP monitor. So we're going to connect and try to see if it's healthy via TCP. So that's my circuit breaker configuration inside the target endpoint. And what I need to do is then uh, make sure that that is my default target uh, using a route rule in the proxy endpoint. So instead of routing to this direct uh, target endpoint, we are going to route to um, the, the one that performs the circuit breaking. Okay, so let's save that. In the meantime, let me re-enable this application in Google Cloud. So now it will be listening again. Uh, let's go back to here. If I invoke it directly, yes, I am. Uh, again, this is the, the endpoint that's running in Google Cloud. That's, that's working correctly. Um, so all that is good. Now, let me, I mentioned the two target servers. These are maybe new concepts. I have one called echo target one and one called echo fallback. Where do I configure these? I configure these in the admin environment um, panels. Make sure I select the right organization or the right environment. That's test. And I can create target servers here. And what I do is I um, specify the name of the target server. This can be anything. Uh, the host name, and then whether I'm using SSL or not, if I am, it's going to be uh, 443. Um, I can specify other SSL information, like whether it's using two-way, the ciphers, the trust store, and so on, but all that, um, all that you should understand. Okay, so this is the echo target number one, and uh, this is how I've configured it. That is the endpoint in Google App Engine. I've said it is SSL and it is enabled, so all that's good. This is my fallback. Um, this is the fallback server, and it's marked as a fallback and um, in the in the proxy, and that thing is going to route to my, uh, believe it or not, to my local workstation. Okay, so two servers. This one is the primary. This one, this fallback, is the is the uh, fallback server, target server, and if the the initial target responds. Six, uh, responds successfully, then we never hit the top, the fallback. If the initial target does not respond successfully, then um, the request will go to the fallback. Let's see it working. So I'll turn on trace. Um, looks just like before. Uh, we will again try to uh, invoke the proxy. So this is the proxy endpoint um, with my path. And it's going to, again, it's just doing a pass through. And I can invoke this many times. Um, so you should see successful uh, requests here in the trace uh, and it, there are no policies running but if I click here you can see it's invoking that endpoint. Okay now let's once again disable the application. Now we're telling Google Cloud uh, don't accept requests for this application and if I uh, send a request directly uh, what we should expect to see is um, Sending it directly, we should expect to see that 404. Okay, that's all as expected. Now let's try it through the proxy. What do we see? I want, to, want you to pay attention. What we received is not a 404. What we received instead is a 200. Okay, and that response is being sent by the application that's running on the right side of my screen. Uh, that's the local um, echo server. That is the thing that I have running um, just in this other terminal. And if I run that again, um, we'll see that continues, that local server continues to serve load to my request. I'm going, I'm sending them into the proxy. Um, they're being proxied to my local service. Uh, if I look in trace, you can see all of these requests are successful. There's no 404. But now let's see what happens if I re-enable this application. Again, this is in Google Cloud. Now the application is going to begin listening again. I'll flip back over to my uh, terminal and I'll run uh, again a request into the API proxy uh, that's listening. And now with all this extra information, you can see that is the request that's being received um, or handled by the instance running in Google Cloud. 
in trace, you can see, yep, that's where it's sending it to. This one is sending it to um, that endpoint. So all this detection, the detection of whether the endpoint is up or available or healthy is done automatically by Apigee by virtue of my configuration here with the target servers. And the, um, the health monitor uh, using um, this as a way to, to a 404 response indicates, OK, that server is unhealthy. Uh, and also specifying the health monitor with the TCP connection. OK, so that's how target servers and Apigee can be used to implement the circuit breaker pattern for upstream systems. I hope this helps. Uh, I have all the code available for you if you want to see it. Um, let me know if questions.